with tech selling off after a magnificent run, what do you do with the cybersecurity plays that have been putting up terrific numbers? Take Kramer Fave CyberArk. That's the Israeli company that protects so-called privileged accounts or administrator accounts that are often targeted by hackers because they hold the keys to the digital kingdom. This stock has been an incredible performance, up more than 60% for the year, although its recent track record is kind of turbulent. CyberArk stock peaked at nearly 150 in July, then plummeted to the mid-90s, its lows in October, before rebounding to 120 as of today. Some of that's because Wall Street became more comfortable with these turbocharged growth tech stocks again. Some of it's because the company reported a fabulous quarter about a month ago. So can this thing keep climbing? Let's take a closer look with Udi McCotty. He's the co-founder, chairman, CEO of CyberArk. To get a better read on how his company's doing, where it's headed, Mr. McCotty, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Udi. Thank Have you, a seat. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so Udi, I get worried because the number of companies that have signed up with you, big Fortune 500 companies, in the last four months is so large that I have to feel something's happening that either your salespeople are doing great, which I'm sure they are, or somebody did something we don't know about, and uh, the word got out that yeah, they had to hire you. What is that? What the hell's going on? I think the word is out that privilege access is at the center point of digital transformation and also reducing risk. So we're an enabling technology for companies who want to go fast and enable uh, digital transformation, but also protect against what the hackers are going after. So okay, the word so, is out. So we're, let's say you got a business and you want to go, you want to digitize, you want to go to Amazon Web Services. Does that create a particular new hole in your situation? Yeah, it, it increases the attack surface. Now it's an all-in. If somebody takes over that cloud infrastructure, they have everything. And so there's a nice line between what the cloud provider would, would do and what the, our customers would do and protect their own data, their access to that data. I was astonished to see the amount of federal business you're doing. I thought the federal government would have already figured this out. Uh, Q3 was a record for global government for us, but uh, definitely uh, here, uh, U.S. Uh, federal. Uh, they have a program, actually, to make it easier for agencies to adopt privilege access management with CyberArk, the CDM program. So they've been executing on that. Okay. Now, um, energy. What, what are they worried about? Energy is one of the most vulnerable verticals out there. Why? Uh, in every survey, because it's so the attack surface is so wide. They have so many convoluted uh, systems, very old technologies. Some systems they're, they're afraid to even touch and upgrade. So for an attacker, it's really a, a walk in the park. Um, but Wait now a they're second. investing. Energies. These are very rich companies. They have a lot of vulnerability. We don't want anyone in there. What are they just underspent? They 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 have a very complex uh, infrastructure. So they are spending. Uh, but I think the, uh, the, the going belief was the attackers won't make it on the inside. That's, uh, that's changing these days. It's very clear that nation states, sophisticated attackers can make it on the inside. So they're also investing now, but they are behind. But they're naive. Not naive. Not naive. I think it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's an evolution. There were industries that were more targeted in the past. Now right. it's clear that energy is also a prime target. Okay, there's one that I'm very concerned about uh, involving HIPAA and pharmaceutical. Now, you guys are starting to... Uh, it'd be, you, you have to explain to people what it is. But if they're in on the pharmaceuticals, they know about us. They know about things they should know. Yeah, there's a lot of information in the pharmaceutical because of all the experiments and trials. Right, if you're doing. in a phase three, absolutely. which is secret, your name is known. Yeah. They have your name. Yeah, absolutely. And we see these verticals investing and understanding the, and the information that they hold is super sensitive. But, okay, so let's look at the case of someone who's been hit. It would be in their interest not to tell, but we know from when Target didn't tell immediately that the reputational damage is very high. Yeah, we see the Global 2000s have uh, response uh, platforms in which they, they know that they have to disclose. Sometimes it's regulatory reasons they have to disclose. Right. And also a crisis management, a proper crisis management approach says disclose. Uh, right. Get your house under order and, and invite companies like CyberArk to help. But, uh, but disclosed. So I think they would have. Disgruntled employees, people looking for ransom, or nation state? All of the above. <laughs> All of the above. And I think the, the, the weapons of nation states have also made their way into the hands of criminal organizations and even the amateur. Uh, type uh, type hackers. So all of the above is getting harder these days to even know who is the attacker because they're using what's called false flags, where you think it's one country but it's another country and it could be a, even a criminal organization. But we focus on what you can do is proactively protect the infrastructure. Once they're in, can you find it? Yeah, yeah. That's what uh, companies like us uh, we help. We partner with other security uh, technologies so that the organization has time to respond and right. and, and basically contain the attack. When you first came on, smaller company. Uh, had a base of uh, people, ex-military in Israel, uh, trustworthy. Uh, many of them you knew. You're now a huge company. Uh, how do you keep a guy f uh, who's playing the long game? He works for you for five years. He knows all the tricks of the trade, and then he goes after. 
We, we, we follow our own best practices and how we, we track, we, we, we check our people. In so if I worked at your checks. company for five years and I leave, I'm still being followed by Oh, cyber. no, 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 no. I, I meant background checks when you're coming uh, okay. when you're coming on board. But of course, we protect our own uh, secrecy and, uh, and, and limit what people can access. OK, so do you tell people that you got to make your password much more difficult? It's much more than that. I mean, yes. what we do is actually the password never reaches an end user. They're rotated. We give people access to what they need to do, but the password is never exposed so that the attacker can't latch on them. OK, now let's talk about com competition. Today, there's a downgrade of CrowdStrike. People talk about it's too crowded. Uh, Fortinet's been good, but Palo Alto struggled last week, was down 30 points, even though I think they're trying to move from, you know, digital to a digital world. Uh, we got Zscaler. Uh, they all have landed and expand. Really. They all want to come in on one thing and then take over Cisco. So uh, how do you, as a smaller company, uh, keep them at bay? So, so first of all, we really grew. We now have 5,000 uh, customers. You're huge. Out of Israel, we're the second largest public information security company. Right. And in our space, we're the only public company in the privilege access management space. So we have long-term ambitions as well. We, we dominate and, and work hard to, to be the market leader in our space, but also partner and look at adjacencies. Okay, I was with the company out in uh, San Francisco last week. Uh, they had an office in Israel and they had an office in America. They thought Israel was too hard to communicate with. So they closed Israel. Now, you're based also in Newton, Massachusetts. Is it a problem to have two headquarters, basically? No, we, I think it's a, it's a matter of evolution. I think from day one, we wanted to be a true global company where we know how to work with the R&D in Israel, know how to work with the R&D in the U.S., and the offices around the world. It's working perfectly. All right, one last question. Uh, my daughter had $1,000 pulled out of her account, a major bank. And then a second thousand. She let them know uh, they're negotiating now back. We're starting to see big hacks, huge amount of money. But we don't read about them. Why don't we read about them? It's, uh, it's, it's really out there. Uh, but the thousand the dollars really uh, are, 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 are the small ones. Um, but, not, to, uh, <laughs> not to someone who's but, 22. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think they, they try to resolve those quickly before they're publicized. Wow. This is all right. Well, that's Udi Makati, chairman and CEO of CyberArk Software. If you're not worried about it, do you know, I check my balance every day. You should be checking your balance every day. This is too prevalent. And it's, you have to take care of yourself, too. They can't do everything. Mad Money's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.